Introducing Vinia, a new miracle superfood from the Holy Land that is clinically proven to increase your blood circulation and the delivery of oxygen, resulting in improved physical energy and mental alertness. So order your Vinia today at ViniaBloodFlow.com or call 800-600-3619. Vinia, changing blood flow forever. See, I don't have to call you up one by one and say, listen to me, let me tell you what God's saying to you. No, 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 no. When that word goes out in the atmosphere, faith grabs stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, somebody needs to prophetically just put your hand in the air and you need to grab this bamboo season. Yeah, some of y'all got it. Some of y'all got two hands and you say, uh-uh, I'm snatching that. This is mine right here. We not gonna be in the same place this time next month. We not gonna be in the same place this time next year. It's bamboo season. I'm about to, I'm snatching that bird. We try to avoid risk at all costs. But believing God is risky business. And every person I look at in the word that we quote their scriptures and get tattoos of what they said and, and, and have it hanging up in our kitchen, all of those people did not live safe, comfortable, cookie-cut lives for Christ. They lived their life out on the limb, and people around them would have called them crazy. And I decided that I wasn't going to talk about it, I was going, everybody say, be about it. You ever met somebody who acts hard, but they soft as medicated cotton? You know what I'm saying? They got big talk. The, the, the old school would say they got a lot of bark, but no bite. Like, like, that's what most of the church looks like. A bunch of scripture quoting. No actual results. A bunch of telling people what they should be doing no actual track record of doing it themselves. And this is why people are like, yeah, y'all are hypocrites. Yeah, I can't believe y'all. I decided I didn't want to talk about living a life for God. I wanted to live it so that then people can talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. You're going to talk about it when you see what God has done. The goal of this is to become a living word. Not, not something that all of us have to be like, yeah, and, and in 2 Corinthians it says they should be able to look at 1 Michael 2, 2 Bree, 3 William. See, I need you to be the Bible that people read. And the truth of the matter is, if you were the only word that people saw, they would not fall in love with Jesus. Today, I'm challenging you to go beyond where you have been and allow God to start putting seeds on your heart and in your life that will make you the living word. Everybody say living word. When people talk about generosity... They don't have to go to a scripture in Malachi. They can look at the scripture of Sarah. And every time you come into Starbucks, for some reason, you're joyful, you're generous, you encourage, and you left me the same amount of tip that it costs for your coffee? She different. They should be able to be at the sports games with you and your kids who can't really play the sports. And be able to watch how you react. This is where some of y'all get in trouble. When the call goes the wrong way, some of y'all lose all your sanctification and all of the words that come in, out of your mouth are cusses. That's old school, cusses. What I'm saying to you is, would anybody be able to see the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control. I just made a decision that for the rest of the series, since Will, we're at a place where it's like, um, we can't go back. I'm going to talk to the people sitting at the adult table. The last part of this series, I'm not talking to people who are still trying to figure out if they want to live in crazy faith. The rest of this series... It's for the people who have decided. Somebody say, I have, I have decided. 
And maybe this is the 30 seconds you need to decide because I'm going to another level for people who want to actually live this out. And by this time next year, see the fruit of the life that they have decided to live today. I need you to decide. Somebody say, I have decided. decided. If you're going to live in crazier faith while you're still sitting here and the bank account is in negative, while you're sitting here right now and you're separated from the person you want to be with, You can make a decision right now that you're going to live in crazier faith. You are in a halfway house. You're in jail. Shout out to my guys in Dallas, Mike DeGrade and my people in Oklahoma City. Y'all, people are watching crazy faith in jail right now. Hold on. Now y'all going to let people in jail out praise you and have more faith? What I'm saying is it doesn't matter the situation. God's saying you can decide. Somebody say, I have decided. So everybody put on your, put on your big boy and big girl britches. Today we're going to another level. Are you ready for another level? So last week we talked about faith like a farmer. And I am so proud of Transformation Church because as soon as that message went out, Over 100,000 people watched that message in 48 hours. And it started to be shared and started to go all over. And I started hearing crazy faith testimonies. And I encourage everybody, go back and watch that message. But for a three-point recap in 10 seconds, this is what you need to understand about having faith like a farmer. Number one, sow it before you see it. If you put it in the ground, Before you see any harvest, that is the place where things start to change. Then you need to sacrifice it before you see it. That means that I'm going to have to make a sacrifice. I'm going to have to give my time, my treasure, my talent before there is any results. These are keys to the kingdom. And the last one is start it before you see it. So many people want to start after they have a guarantee. That's not faith. That is strategy. Most people want their relationship with God to be strategic instead of faith-filled. So if you knew it was going to work, this is just strategy. Duh, that's common sense. That's supposed, it takes faith to be able to start it before you see it. Start the business before you see it. Start the website before you have anybody that comes to it. Start the book before you have a deal. Start the clothing line when you have nobody to wear it. Start. Somebody shout at me, start. Start. That's faith. Stop acting like it's faith when you act a surplus and you're sitting around like, yeah, what should I do now? That's not faith. That's strategic. But God wants you to start it before you see it. And as a church, every year we come and bring all of our faith to this moment that we call our crazy faith offering. And um, I'm encouraging you right now to start praying about what God would have you give in this offering. And I don't care what it is. I'm not looking for anybody's specific gift or anything. I'm trying to get my mind around what God's told me and Natalie to give. I ain't got time to be worried about you. I'm leading the charge. This ain't something y'all do. And I, I I am the lead servant at Transformation Church, not the lead pastor. And what God's asking me to do this year It hurts. Me and my wife still have to come to, uh, see, this is the one thing I'm going to tell you, husbands and wife, pick the right time to talk about what God has told you because y'all can get in real interesting conversations. (laughs) Yeah, y'all pray for me and Pastor Nat. But I'm leading this charge because December 5th, we're coming here with our faith. And every year people begin to fast and pray and save and say, we are going to give towards the vision of the future of what God is going to do. And y'all, I can't even give you full details until I get a couple of clearances from a couple of people. But what I'm telling you is you've never seen Transformation Church's vision before. What God has given me and where we are going is about to blow the socks off of anything that we've ever done. Somebody's getting it by faith right now. You're starting to understand. And I need some people to so before you see it. What we're about to do is going to take more resources, human resource and financial resource than anything we've ever done. And I bet just like there was a few hundred people that had crazy faith to give for the $80,000 for those cameras back in 2015. I bet there's about 30,000 
people that will give whatever God tells you so that we can go to another level in crazy faith. I want to let everybody know because some of y'all real crazy and you're not just going to give online. Some of y'all going to actually come to Tulsa. Y'all do it every year. So I just want to make sure I let you know we're going back to where it all started. We have set up our, our, our flagship location at 1519. If you've never been to North Tulsa, come on to Tulsa, baby. And we're opening back the doors of our North Tulsa building for us to give our crazy faith offering. And you say, why is that significant? It was from that place that we sowed a seed of $8,300 into other churches that broke the back of poverty over our ministry. And the Holy Spirit said, Mike, go back to ground zero. And I want people to come and I want them to give on that soil. Let me tell you about a cereal sower that I found out about this week. I'm just trying to stir your faith. That's my assignment today is to stir your faith. There was somebody that had been believing, a couple that had been believing for a brand new car. They just had a baby, found out they were pregnant again, and they had one car and they needed to be able to move. They had a couple of different family members come in and see their situation and say, you know what? We got a little extra. We'll buy you a car. You can pay us back whenever. And that was an amazing blessing. Except God had told the husband of this relationship specifically, I'm about to do something in your vehicle situation. And in the face of people wanting to help, he had to look at people he loved and say, I'm sorry. This may seem crazy. I'm sorry that I can't accept the help that you're about to give me. Why? Because God told me, he was going to do something specific for me concerning my vehicle. Please don't get it twisted. Every blessing is not obedience. Oh, I just said some somebody. You count every blessing as obedience. Every blessing is not obedience when God told you something different. This man looked at two different sides of his family and told them, no, God's going to do something. His wife looking at him like, boy, if you don't quit tripping. But they stood in agreement. Last week, I was riding with this individual, and he said, Pastor Mike, I got to tell you something. I said, what's up? He said, thank you. I said, thank you for what? I said, thank you for living in crazy faith. He said, um, this atmosphere has changed my faith forever to believe God. I was like, that, oh, great. God bless you. Glory to God. You know, you just start saying all the things. He said, no, you don't understand. <laughs> He said, after telling one family member no and telling the other family member no, I got a call two days ago. I said, who was it? It was somebody who had been watching our situation from afar. Knew no details, but they called and said, I'm on the way to the car dealership to buy myself a new car, and I currently have the keys to your new car. Would you meet me at this place? I've already signed everything over to you, and I need you to come pick up the keys to your brand new fully loaded vehicle. Y'all don't want to shout with me, but you can't convince me that crazy faith season is here, and God has opened up the windows. See, I see the people who are mad and jealous, and then I see the people who are in line for the miracle, because they begin to praise just like it happened for them. I'm telling you, there are things that God wants to do right now that require somebody shout at me, crazy faith. Okay. So that was the first confirmation that I had to preach the message I'm about to preach today. And I got two more confirmations with exact words of what I was supposed to preach today. So I'm going to obey and I'm going to tell you a story about what happened on a Monday night, January 30th, 2012. At Transformation Church, we have Monday night prayer. Some of y'all think that this is what makes Transformation Church great. The sauce of our church is prayer. And we pray all the time. My parents, they lead that mug. They just be praying and praying and praying. 
Sometimes mama come in. Y'all know the memes that you see of the mom waking you up at four o'clock in the morning. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, talk to, that's Brenda Todd. And, um, and, and what ends up happening is we were at this prayer meeting. None of y'all was here. This was 2012. N no blow up. Nobody watching on Instagram. No, nobody, I mean, could have been 13 people at prayer that night. And this woman comes up and she says, I have a prophetic word. And anybody who doesn't know what a prophetic word is, it's a word of encouragement or warning, warning or correction that is supposed to move you forward. And this woman says, I have a prophetic word. And I'm, she's like, Pastor Mike, this is for you. You just received this. And you know, when it comes to the prophetic, some people are just weird. It's not the prophetic, it's them. They're weird. They just start doing weird stuff. And prophetic don't have to be weird, but... And this woman said, I, f I feel like, and you know, I'd just be ready because I've been around prophetic people all my life, so I never know. Somebody might hit a backflip and do the splits and be like, God said, split it open. And I'd be like, why did you? I'm telling y'all, there's crazy stuff that I've seen all kind of stuff. So I'm just bracing myself for the. And she says, could you lift your hands? I'll lift my hands. She says, God said about this church that it's about to be a bamboo season. And y'all like, yes, 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 yes. That didn't mean nothing to me. Like, I'm like the bamboo season. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, church people always try to make stuff deep and don't know what's happening. But when she said bamboo season, that, I was like, great. The bamboo season. She said, God is about to do a new thing. And it's going to be like bamboo. I was like, like bamboo. And she said, yes. And so sometimes God gives you a prophetic word that you got to go study. And so I went and I started studying. Well, at least she said bamboo, so maybe let me look at bamboo. And what I found out about the bamboo plant is the bamboo plant is one of the fastest growing plants in the world. It's sturdy, it's solid, it's strong, it's durable, it's used for building. It is incredibly strong and regenerates itself in nature. So then I was like, okay. God's about to make it a bamboo season, about to be strong, sturdy. I was like, let me do a push up. Like, I didn't know. And then I kept reading. And it said, it takes the bamboo about three years after being sown to break through. Now, last week, we talked about having faith like a farmer. And we talked about sowing seed. And I, I gave you a formula, but then when I started to look at this, I started to see that there are different ways that different plants grow. And this plant grows under the surface for three years. But then, when it breaks through, ooh-wee, scientifically, under the right conditions, the bamboo can grow an astonishing two inches an hour. Three years under, two inches an hour. That means that suddenly, where it looked like there was nothing, somebody shout at me, suddenly. Woo! Where it looks like there was no movement, no growth, nobody cared, nobody was listening, nobody had traction. Somebody shot at me suddenly. It grows two inches an hour. That means the bamboo can go from nothing to growing four feet in 24 hours. God began to show me, he said, Michael, I need you to tell my church that this is the season of unusual acceleration. I need somebody to hear me. Put up a picture of a bamboo forest. This is a picture of what some of your life is about to look like. Now, everybody don't have to shout because some of y'all don't have faith for this. But the name of this series is Crazier Faith. And right now, what looks completely empty. Right now, what looks like a vacant desert. Right now, what nobody has been able to check for. Check back with me tomorrow. Because what God can do, somebody say it's bamboo season. 
And I came to prophetically tell you that it is bamboo season and it is the season of unusual acceleration. Somebody say unusual acceleration. No, say it again, unusual. See, see, the thing that we talked about last week was usual growth. And I feel like I had to start you there to let you know that we serve a God that bases things on principles and systems. Like he, he, he does things and puts things in place so that we can follow them. But there's always moments where God in his sovereignty, this is a word we don't use often, but somebody say sovereign. That means he can do what he wants, with who he wants, when he wants to. And see, some of us get so bogged into the structure and the system that we forget that our God is, somebody say it with me, sovereign. God uses systems, but God is still sovereign. Some of y'all, it's going to happen suddenly. I'm not here for everybody today, but I'm on assignment for at least 3,000 of y'all that believe that it ain't going to take all that time that it took all of them to do that. I serve a God of the exception. I serve a God that says, hold on, I can be sovereign in this situation. And somebody shot at me suddenly. And some of y'all are saying, well, Pastor Mike, I, um, I am grateful for your new revelation. But last week I took copious notes around the subject that you gave us. And you gave us a very exact and distinct formula at how God was going to move. See, the problem is the system is still working. It's just been accelerated. It's still the same system, but it goes Seed, help me, So, time work harvest. Seed, so time work harvest. It's the same system, it's just been accelerated. And I don't know who this is for right now, but some of y'all going to sow your seed and it's just going to be like, time work harvest. <laughs> There's some things that you're going to put in the ground today. And it's going to come up tomorrow because it's going to be like, time work harvest. And some of y'all, it's going to seem like one word. See, so time work harvest. What you doing? Just see, so work time harvest? What's happening in your life? See, so work time harvest. Just try to say that fast with me. Put it up there. What, what are we seeing right now? See, so time work hard. But I saw you this time last month. And you were telling me how everything was jacked up. What happened? See, so time work hard. But you told me that your family was split apart and wouldn't be together for Christmas. But I saw y'all in a picture together. What happened? See, so time work harvest. Some of y'all gonna be walking into places that were barren last week. I don't know who this is for. You gonna open up bank accounts that didn't have nothing in it last week. You gonna go to your friend group text that had nobody faithful in it last week. And God said, so to see. Because this is the season of unusual acceleration. If you believe it, give God a shout of praise. See, see, see this word is challenging somebody's crazy faith. See, because what faith does is hear a word and it snatches it and says, that's mine. See, I don't have to call you up one by one and say, listen to me. Let me tell you what God's saying to you. No, 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 no. When that word goes out in the atmosphere, faith grabs stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody needs to prophetically just put your hand in the air and you need to grab this bamboo season. Yeah, some of y'all got it. Some of y'all got two hands and you say, uh-uh, I'm snatching that. This is mine right here. We not going to be in the same place this time next month. We not going to be in the same place this time next year. It's bamboo season. I'm about to, I'm snatching that word. Somebody say, give me that. 
Oh, I feel that thing. Some of y'all about to see unusual acceleration. Give me that. My business is about to see unusual acceleration. Give me that. My family's about to see unusual acceleration. Give me that. By faith, we can claim things. Somebody will shout at me, give me that. Healing? Oh, y'all missed it. Healing? Give me that. Discipline? Give me that. Some of y'all, uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Kingdom relationships? Give me that. Working in my purpose? Give me It's a season of unusual acceleration. It don't matter that you didn't get into the school. God will bring the professor to you and have him teach you personally. Y'all don't hear me. This is a season of unusual acceleration. Give me that. Pastor Mike, how is that physically and astronomically possible? It's because remember, there's one word in there that we only understand from a mortal standpoint. Seed, so here's the word, time. See, the thing you don't know about God is time was invented for us. But God stands outside of time. And he can look at the situation. I said, oh, oh, okay. Now I know I have their heart because the heart and the hand are connected. So when they sowed it, I, kn I knew I had them. I knew they loved me. I knew. So now that I see they can sow, now I can stand outside of time and I can go ahead and blah, 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 blah. all of the pain and the setup and the frustration that it would take for that to usually happen. I can speed up time. Let me prove it to you in the word. Somebody go to Joel chapter 2, verse 25. So I will restore. I got to say this to the people who have felt like they've wasted time and lost. Yeah, I'm talking to somebody. There are people that feel like you have lost seasons. Well, if, I, if transformation would have been around when I was 20 and I would have heard these messages and I would have been, but now I'm 50 and now I'm 45 and now I'm 60 and it just feels like I'm behind the eight ball and it feels like I, I, I can't. This scripture is for you and it's for this generation who Statistics say that has the highest level of suicide because they feel that at age 26, they've done nothing with their lives. See, the enemy tries to, I heard it said like this, if he can't get in front of you and stop you, he gets behind you and pushes you and makes you feel like you've wasted and lost too much time. If you fit in any of those categories, Joel chapter 2, 25 is about to be crazy faith encouragement for you. So I, this is God talking, will restore to you the years, that's time. Ooh, who's about to receive this? That the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust has eaten, the consuming locust has eaten, and the chewing locust. See, what y'all don't understand is what locusts are. Locusts are animals that ate harvest. Everything that has eaten your harvest, every person, every investment, every idea, every person you invested your life into, that job you served for 20 years, those people you gave to, and somehow they snatched it from under. Everything that the locust stole, God said, I'm going to restore to you the time. I feel this. Somebody's heart and soul is about to be replenished. You shall eat plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. See, there's something you learned in that process too. He said that you're not just going to go through that and not learn something. I've dealt with you in this. You've learned character things in this. I've changed your picker. Some of y'all got a picker that's off. Y'all picked the wrong people, the wrong places, and the wrong partners. But God said, I'm changing and all that. I've dealt with you in this and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know after all of this happened, after I restore you, then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. 
and I'm the Lord your God. I'm the only one that could have done this. You thought your best days was at 35? I'm going to make 55 look like the new 35. Y'all don't hear me. I'm going to make your kids look at you and say, what are you doing? I'm going to make those people who graduated with more degrees than a thermometer come learn from you. I'm going to, y'all don't hear me up in here. I will restore. Somebody shout at me, restore. I'm shaking somebody's faith right now. Some of y'all dead that's watching this right now, but I'm shaking somebody's faith who's about to pop because it's bamboo season. He said, I'm the one who did this and there is no other. My people, he says it again, shall never be put to shame. Somebody needs to thank God that everything that you've been ashamed of, God will redeem and restore. Because the last sentence of your life will be that God did not let it end in shame. The family that's been ridiculing you for your crazy faith step, the person who said, you better not give that money to them. You coming on this vacation. God said, I promise you, stay with me. I will not let you be put to shame. That's why, Dale, it's the bamboo season. God's saying, you've been faithful all them years and nothing came up. It was still growing. It was just going down. Because of what's about to come up. Uh, little root, little fruit. <sighs> little root, little fruit. For what God's about to do, it had to take a little bit longer down. But as soon as it breaks forth, ooh, I, feel, I feel my mama's anointing right here. When Brenda Todd says break forth, break forth, there's something that happened. That, that, like, there, there's something that's about to happen. It's go, you're going to be looking at it. And as you're looking at it, then it's just going to break forth. And something is going to move and it ain't going to stop. This week, a blessing. Next week, a blessing. The week after that, a blessing? The week after that, it's a revolving door. Hold on, I'm lit. This is my life now? Somebody shout at me, it's bamboo season. So, so today, I just got to give you a few, few points because some of y'all done. You cooked right now. All you needed, you got it right now. You, you about to like, let's go. It's bamboo season. Your whole room going to be bamboos this week. I, I got you. But for those of you that just need a little more how to activate the bamboo season, I got a few points for you. Um, I forgot to say the one thing I really like, Bree. Like in that, 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 uh, that line of system or principles. Can you put the seed so time? Can you put it back up there? See, what ends up happening is that it goes seed, sow, time, work, harvest. And then it's bamboo season, so there's unusual acceleration in seasonal time work harvest. And you start saying it so fast that what people hear and what it feels like is seed harvest. Seed harvest. Seed harvest. This is the season our church is in. It's like when we plant, it just come up. Seed harvest. We're in such a season of that you, it's so fast, you don't even see. <sighs> and I just needed to tell somebody that only, the only reason God does something for this house as the organization is to paint a picture of what he wants to do in your house as the organism. Put your hand on yourself and say, this is my season Ooh. of unusual acceleration. I'm going to give you three more chances because some of y'all just repeated me. Now you're going to say it by faith. This is my season Ooh. of unusual acceleration. Come on, I want you to look at me. Get in my face right now. And I want you to say, this is my season, is my season. of unusual acceleration. Now, some of y'all about to see this in your life. I'm saying it one more time. Say it with faith. This is my season of unusual acceleration. 
Now give God praise if you really believe it. Some of y'all don't believe it, but somebody's praise does actually believe it. Yep. Luke chapter 5. One day, as the disciples, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Now, let me set the scene for you. Jesus is going around drawing crowds from everywhere. The man can stand anywhere and start preaching, and he is kind of the son of God. And so, like, people just start coming, being healed, blessed, delivered, set free, all the other things. He's preaching at this moment on the Sea of Galilee and could have stayed on the shore, but he saw something that he wanted to use as an example that wasn't the main thing, but was the thing that he wanted us to learn. So he sees two boats, and he was like, I'm about to get in somebody's boat. And he then looks around for the owner. Where are the people whose boat, oh, they're washing their nets. Hmm. See, what you don't know if you don't fish is washing your nets is the thing you have to do after you go out fishing, no matter if you catch anything or not. What this tells me is that if we want to start seeing and activating a season of unusual acceleration, write this point down. You have to steward well what's not working well. These men were fishing all night that we find out later in the story. They catch nothing. They looked buried. They looked under. But God saw them still being faithful in a place that didn't seem fruitful. And it attracted God to them. Mm. In an age where when it doesn't look like it's working, most people quit. God told me to come here and tell you that what is attractive for unusual acceleration is washing your nets, using well or stewarding well over what doesn't look like it's producing well for you right now. That car that you are ready to throw out. God said you haven't cleaned it in a month. How are you believing for unusual acceleration and you won't steward well? What's not working well? Some of y'all go to marriage counseling for two sessions. And if they don't heal 25 years of your trauma in two sessions, you done. This costs too much. We can go on a vacation and then be mad at each other in the whole vacation. God is saying you're not stewarding well over your marriage. Would you steward well over what's not working well? These disciples decided even though it didn't work, I'm still going to work it. And I don't know who needs to hear this. But God does not give more to somebody who does not care about what they already have. He is the most amazing steward. Somebody who wants to take care and maximize everything. We see it in the story of the talents. If you go to another place where they tell the parables, God, by his grace, gives somebody one, somebody two, somebody five. And he says, I'm going away. I just need you to do something with what I gave you. And literally, the one with five turns it into ten. The one with two turns it into four. The one with one was scared, and so he buried it. And when he put it in the ground and he came back, the master said, what'd you do? And he said, I doubled it. I doubled it. And this man said, I knew you were a wicked, harsh master, so I didn't want to mess anything up. I didn't want to live in crazy faith. I didn't want to take a step of faith. And so I buried what I had. I kept it hidden. I kept it protected. And here it is back to you. God literally called him a wicked servant because he didn't steward well what seemed to not be working well. I don't know what it is in your life right now, but if you want to see unusual acceleration, God's looking at what's in your hand right now. That apartment that you can't stand, that you're believing God for a house, but I don't want to, can I step on some people? Just, let me just, you're not stewarding your finances well. 
Your nails done, hair done, everything did, but your bills are late? You're messing up the vehicle that God will use on paper to be able to bless you in a different season because you're trying to impress people you don't even like. It's time to steward. Y'all see how quiet it just got right there? It's time to steward. Some of y'all are about to go into so much debt over the holiday season to try to make somebody feel better about you that you won't have a conversation with. The conversation would be Merry Christmas more than all of the gifts that you were going to give them. Say, I'm sorry, and replace the Sony PlayStation. I'm in your business right now. See, what I'm trying to tell you is God says, I've given you something. Steward it well. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.